What's up YouTube? As always, welcome to the channel. In the last myths video, we discussed common myths that the SDA church teaches about Protestants. Today, we're gonna talk about three they often say regarding <laughs> Yes, Bible flock box, I'm talking about you. If you've watched the previous video, you're gonna know I'm not a Roman Catholic, nor am I a representative for the Roman church, but I do have many that watch the channel who are. Having grown up Adventist, just like with the Protestants, lots was said regarding Roman Catholicism. Since my departure from the SDA church some time ago and being a bit of a theology nerd and having had a fair share of discussions and friendly debates with Roman Catholics, I wanted to dispel three of the common myths that I used to always hear and still hear. Catholics in the audience, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, but let's talk myth number one. <laughs> So for decades now, the Adventist church has latched onto this idea that the Roman branch of the church teaches that the Pope is referred to as the Vicar of the Son of God, which they claim translates in Latin to Vicarius Fili Dei. Even Adventist religion professors teach this conspiracy theory in their universities. The story goes that when you take the Roman numerals of each letter of Vicarius Fili Dei, you get... <gasps> 666. This is used to bolster their interpretation of Revelation 13, 18 and 15, 2 that the Pope is the Antichrist. Where are they getting this supposed papal title from? You guessed it. No, it's not from primary Catholic sources, of course, but in true SDA fashion, from a forged document called the Donation of Constantine, which was written roughly between 750 and 800 AD. In this forgery, this Latin title is used in reference to the Pope. So that settles it, right? That somehow proves that the Pope is the beast of 666? Uh, well, no. They attach another claim to it, and that is that they say that the title Vicar of the Son of God is engraved on the miter of the Pope. You know, the often referenced fish hat that some Adventists claim is a symbol of the Roman church's allegiance to Dagon, the ancient fish god? Yeah, that. But here's what they won't tell you. First, as mentioned, the donation of Constantine is a forgery. This isn't a secret. There is no official Catholic document that proves this, and it's only Seventh-day Adventists that are using this level of conspiratorial drivel to bolster this idea. Secondly, this title is not engraved on the Pope's mitre. The late SDA theologian Samuel Bacchiocchi, who studied at the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, he tried setting out to prove this some decades back to no avail. The SDA church is twisting a title that is actually used by Rome in regards to the Pope, which is Vicar of Christ. You might be wondering, Miles, Christ is the Son of God. How is that any different? Remember the Roman numerals we mentioned earlier. Right. <laughs> You change that up and you're not gonna get 666 anymore. But hey, what's a few fudge numbers here and there? Especially considering that fudging the numbers is an SDA specialty. Just take a look at the membership and baptismal numbers. But lastly, the 666 of the beast is not the number of a title. It is the number of the beast's name. This is what's stated in Revelation 15:2. So even if the Pope had the title Vicar of the Son of God, which he never has, 666 would not apply to him as it is not his name, but his title. But you wanna know something that is fascinating about all this, someone who does actually bear the name of 666 when using this same standard of wonky Roman numeral math and conspiracy? That's right, folks. By true divine providence, evidencing that the triune God most certainly has a brilliant sense of humor, the name Ellen Gould White, when you add the Roman numerals of her name, equals 666. Yes, Ellen G. White the SDA prophetess has a name that adds up to 666, and in her case, unlike the Pope, it is the number of a name, not a title. Uh-oh, Adventists. So to be fair, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is not the only Seventh-day Sabbatarian group making this claim. Paranoia and conspiracy around the papacy and its history is not novel to the SDA Church. But nevertheless, the claim typically goes that at some point in the past, the Roman Church, by way of the papacy or Constantine, depending on who you talk to, changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, and this change had to do with pagan sun worship commingling with supposed Christianity. This is then followed up with the claim that the Roman Catholic Church even admits this by then pointing to a few obscure newspaper articles or the Council of Trent. But the primary issue in all of this is the misunderstanding of terms. When the Roman Church says that it instituted Sunday observance, they mean that the apostles did this. They believe that the apostles
apostles were the first leaders of the Roman Catholic Church, so for them, saying the Catholic Church started Sunday observance and the apostles started Sunday observance are two synonymous things. They aren't using the phrase Catholic Church the way that Adventists are. They don't mean an institution that developed a hierarchical structure and gradually began twisting and changing things after commingling with political power. While you might not agree with their definition, you should really still try to understand what is being said. Adventists will point to things that mention this and say, see, they even admit it, to bolster the idea that at a point past the apostles, the papacy rose up and declared itself able to change the law of God and changed the Sabbath. So this is a myth not because all SDAs are nefarious or evil people, but because there is a lack of understanding around definitions and how each party is using them. So piggybacking off of the last myth, this is probably the most popular myth I used to hear and still hear from Adventists, that the Roman Catholic Church, seeking to usurp power that only God has, changed the law of God by removing some of the Ten Commandments, particularly the Second Commandment, and that this was done to usurp power only God has, and the Roman Church now allows idolatry because of it. They will then point to the Roman Catholic Catechism and say, See, the Second Commandment isn't there, which is why the Roman Catholic Church uses icons in worship. They've made idolatry okay. So firstly, Adventists, you need to understand what a catechism is. I know that word isn't common in Adventist culture and is often seen as icky because it's associated with the pagan Roman Catholics, but a catechism is simply a teaching tool. Your church has these as well, by the way, regardless of what you call it. Your Sabbath school quarterly is a catechetical tool. It's simply a teaching document that allows people to be taught various points of doctrine in an easy to remember format. The Roman Catholic Catechism is no different. As it pertains to the section on the Ten Commandments, no, the Second Commandment is not removed. It is enjoined with the First Commandment. This is done for a reason because the First and Second Commandments are intimately connected regarding idolatry and the worship of the one true God. In fact, if you read Exodus 20, there's actually 13 commandments given, not just 10. Some are nestled into a singular section, and this is precisely what the Roman Catholic Church did with the second commandment. They chose to structure their catechism in such a way that teaches what is fully present from the biblical text, but in the most easy to understand way. Again, a catechism is just a teaching tool. It is not a copy of the Bible. But aha, says the Adventist, as they will continue down this path and say, the Roman Church has also separated up the 10th commandment into two to make it appear like all 10 are there. See, see, it's trickery. Yet again, this is false. They have split apart the 10th, still including all of it, but for the purpose of making a distinction between coveting possessions or property with coveting something that isn't property, like a man's wife. Unless that is you want to lump your neighbor's wife in with his possessions, you really shouldn't have an issue with this. It's simply a breakdown of all of what's present in the biblical text laid out in such a way that it can be taught most effectively. That's it. It isn't nefarious. Saying that all the commandments are not there isn't truthful, and saying that some were removed to usurp some sort of authority from God and make idolatry acceptable is outright dishonest or ignorance. Again, you don't have to agree with their position on things. I myself have many disagreements with Rome, but that doesn't mean you can't represent them accurately. So there you have it. Those are the three biggest myths about Roman Catholics that I used to hear as an Adventist and still hear from them today. Roman Catholics, let me know in the comment section down below. How did I do? That's what I've gleaned over the years from reading your guys' catechism and engaging with you all and discussing these supposed dark truths about you guys. So let me know how I did in the comment section down below. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you can be notified when content like this is uploaded. As always, I'll see you around next time. God bless.